Welcome to Horror Stories Fanatics. If you enjoy this type of content, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on any of our latest and greatest uploads. Carl Danke, born 11 February 1860, died 22 December 1924, was a German serial killer and cannibal who killed and cannibalized dozens of homeless vagrants and travelers from 1903 to 1924. He is often regarded as the forgotten cannibal or the cannibal of Münsterberg. Early Life Denke was born on 11 February 1860 in Oberkunzendorf, northeast of Münsterberg, Silesia, in the Kingdom of Prussia, now Zebich, Poland, to a family of German farmers. Little is known of Denke's childhood, but it is known that he was often described as a quiet and soft-spoken child who was difficult to raise. At the age of 12, Denke ran away from home. Later Years after graduating from elementary school, Dane Kay became the apprentice of a gardener and made a life for himself. At the age of 25, Dane Kay's father died and his older brother inherited their childhood home, while Dane Kay received a portion of money, which he used to buy a piece of land. Dane Kay tried farming, but this failed and Dane Kay sold it as a result. Dane Kay purchased a house on what is now Stavoa Street, but inflation forced him to sell it. Dane Kay still refused to move out and lived in a small apartment to the right of the house's ground floor. He also ran a nearby shop where he sold meat, which most speculate to have contained human remains. Dane Kay volunteered as a cross bearer and organist at the local Lutheran church and was well liked in his community, often affectionately referred to as Papa by the community. Dane Kay quit his membership in the church in 1906. Murders. Carl Danke, for unknown reasons, began murdering homeless vagrants and poor travelers. His first victim was Ida Lahner in 1903. Six years later, in 1909, he killed 25-year-old Emma Sander, another slaughterhouse worker. Edward Troutman was found guilty of her murder, but was released in 1926 after the truth was discovered. His last known victim was Rockus Pollock. Denke also kept a ledger recording his murders. He is also believed to have sold the flesh of his victims as pickled meat to unsuspecting customers, advertised as pork. Arrest, Suicide, and Aftermath On the 21st of December, 1924, Denke lured a homeless drifter named Vincenzo Olivier into his home with the promise of 20 fennec if he wrote a letter for him. Olivier had been directed to Danke by a townswoman, as Danke was known for his charitable nature. According to Olivier, he had sat down at a desk after being handed a pen and paper, but turned to his host after becoming perplexed when Danke dictated, Adolf, do fetter wantst. Adolf, you fat slob. Just in time to see him in the process of raising a pickaxe to strike Olivier's head. The victim managed to duck, receiving a deep gash, eight centimeters in length and two centimeters wide, to the temple before he was able to wrestle the weapon from Danke. In the ensuing struggle, Olivier escaped through the front door, screaming that a madman was trying to kill him, attracting the attention of neighbors, who then alerted the authorities. Initially, Olivier's testimony was disregarded on account of Danke's reputation among the townsfolk, leading to his arrest for vagrancy and panhandling. The judge, however, insisted on further investigation of Olivier's claims, whereupon Danke was taken in for questioning. He was placed in a holding cell, where he hanged himself just hours later with an unspecified ligature, the exact nature of which varies from account to account before an interrogation could take place. In light of this, Danke's home was searched and police found the gruesome truth of his murders and cannibalism. While the exact number of his victims is unknown, Danke's ledger had 31 names recorded, including Olivier, the escaped victim, confirming at least 30 victims. But due to the large number of body parts found in his home, Danke's body count was estimated to be as high as 42 or even higher. A detailed report of what was found includes the following. 16 femurs with one pair of remarkably strong ones, two pairs of very thin ones, six pairs and two left femurs, 15 medium-sized pieces of long bones, four pairs of elbow bones, 
seven heads of radii, nine lower parts of radii, eight lower parts of the elbow, a pair of upper shin bone, a pair of lower elbows and radii, of which extremities still remain well connected, a pair of upper arms, and a pair of upper arm heads, a pair of collarbones, two shoulder blades, eight heels and ankle bones, 120 toes and phalanx, 65 feet and metacarpal bones, five first ribs, and 150 pieces of ribs. Decades later, Denke's case remains mostly forgotten. Still, much about Denke's life, motives, methods, and the exact number of victims remains unknown. Even the only known photograph of him, the one above, was taken after his death. The film Motel Hell has a resemblance to Denke's case, featuring a farmer who entraps and kills tourists to harvest their flesh for his smoked meats. Motel Hell is a 1980 American comedy horror film directed by Kevin Connor and starring Rory Calhoun, Nancy Parsons, and Nina Axelrod. The plot follows farmer, butcher, motel manager, and meat entrepreneur Vincent Smith who traps travelers and harvests them for his human sausages. Because of its low budget, the original intent was to make a serious horror film with moments of disturbing wit and irony. It is often seen as a satire of modern horror films, such as Psycho and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Plot Farmer Vincent Smith and his younger sister Ida live on a farm with an attached motel named Motel Hello. Vincent's renowned smoke meats are actually human flesh. He sets traps on nearby roads to catch victims. He buries the victims up to their necks in his secret garden, then cuts their vocal cords to prevent them from screaming. They are kept on the ground and they're fed until they are ready for harvest. Ida helps Vincent as they both see the victims as animals. Vincent shoots out the front tire of a couple's motorcycle, the male, Bo is placed in the garden, but Vincent brings the female, Terry, to the motel. Sheriff Bruce, Vincent's naive younger brother, arrives the next morning. Vincent tells Terry her boyfriend died in the accident and was buried. A trip to the graveyard shows his crude grave marker. With nowhere to go, Terry decides to stay at the motel. She gradually becomes attracted to Vincent's honest manner and folksy charm, much to Bruce's dismay, who tries to woo her without success. Vincent captures more victims by placing wooden cardboards of cows in the middle of the highway to cause his victims to stop, allowing him to capture them. With this method, he manages to capture Susie and uses sleeping gas for her to sleep. He also places a fake ad and lures in a pair of swingers, believing the hotel to be a swing joint. The next day, Vincent suggests he teach Terry to smoke meat. Ida becomes jealous and attempts to drown Terry, but Vincent arrives to save her, and this causes Terry to fall in love with him completely, and she tries to seduce Vincent. Vincent denies her advances, saying they must marry first. She agrees to marry the following day. Bruce visits the motel to protest Terry's choice. He tells Terry that Vincent has syphilis of the brain. Vincent arrives and he drives off his brother with a shotgun. Vincent, Terry, and Ida drink champagne, but Ida drugs Terry's glass and she faints. Ida and Vincent then prepare some victims for the wedding. Meanwhile, Bruce investigates the disappearances and becomes suspicious of his brother. Vincent and Ida kill three victims and take them to the slaughterhouse. As they remove the victims' bodies, the dirt around Bo loosens and he begins to escape. Bruce sneaks back to the motel to rescue Terry, but Ida returns. She ambushes Bruce and knocks him out, then holds Terry at gunpoint to the meat processing plant, where Vincent reveals his secret. Terry is horrified by the prospect of smoking human flesh. Meanwhile, Bo escapes and frees the other victims from the garden. Ida goes back to the motel to get something to eat, but the victims attack her and knock her out. Terry tries to escape, but Vincent gasses her and ties her to a conveyor belt. He is interrupted by Bo, who crashes through a window, but Vincent strangles the weakened Bo. 
Bruce awakens and finds one of his brother's shotguns. He goes to the plant but finds that his brother has armed himself with a giant chainsaw and placed a pig's head over his own as a gruesome mask. Vincent disarms his brother but Bruce grabs his own chainsaw and duels Vincent during the fight. The belt restraining Terry is activated, sending her slowly to a cutting blade. Despite his wounds, Bruce drives the chainsaw deep into Vincent's side. Bruce frees Terry and returns to Vincent. He gasps his final words, leaving the farm and secret garden to Bruce and lamenting his own hypocrisy for using preservatives. Bruce and Terry go to the secret garden and find only Ida, who is buried head first. As they leave the motel, Bruce comments he is glad he left home when he was 11. Terry suggests burning the motel, claiming it is evil. The neon sign saying Motel Hello fully short circuits, permanently darkening the O. And with that, we've reached the end of this video, all about the most well-known German serial killer, Karl Denke. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this.